Celebrity X Factor has come to a close, and it's safe to say that it's been a tumultuous time for Simon Cowell's reality TV empire. Whilst Britain's Got Talent The Champions pulled in over 7 million viewers during its first episode, the series concluded with 5.6 million viewers and finished 13th in its time slot, a far cry from the show's days as a reality TV juggernaut. Likewise, the last minute cancellation of the X Factor All Stars in favour of the X Factor the Band, a show which seems to have been born out of a need to try and topple pop juggernauts and ex X Factor winners Little Mix's own show, Little Mix The Search, speaks volumes to the show's tumultuous behind the scenes scrambling for continued relevance in a TV landscape which has fundamentally changed since the show emerged in September of 2004. In the midst of all this uncertainty came a show that almost no one asked for. X Factor Celebrity, and it's fair to say that it's not exactly been a resounding success. With a viewing figure peak of 6.46 million, and at the time of this video a low point around 4.63 million, the show performed significantly worse than X Factor Series 15, routinely falling outside of the top 15 in its time slot. But why is this? Well, whilst the idea of seeing your favourite X Love Islanders and Chasers is a tantalising prospect, I guess, the show failed to capture the public's imagination in the same fashion as previous series of the show, and other than a minor controversy regarding Jenny Ryan's premature elimination, did not create the sort of water cooler TV moments that the Simon Cowell Entertainment train is infamous for. In many ways, it felt as if there was something missing from this spin-off, almost as though, for the first time in the series' history, it lacked real stakes. I don't think this is necessarily a result of the format no longer working. The X Factor is still an iconic reality TV competition show, and its influence across the singing show format cannot be understated. No, I think that the real reason that X Factor Celebrity failed is simply because celebrities are incongruous to the X Factor's central ethos. Across this video, I'll be exploring and interrogating both the X Factor Celebrity and Celebrity reality TV shows as a whole to try and figure out why this year's series of The X Factor simply did not work. To answer this question, we have to go all the way back to our first video. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Fantastic. In which we looked at how the winners of the show often failed to find success outside the confines of the X Factors format. In this video, we delved into the mythos of the show and argued that the key to the show's success is derived from its ability to make heroes of ordinary people. This is because reality TV is inherently a form of storytelling. It seeks to show us the classical hero's journey in the guise of depicting real people in artificial situations. For a show like The X Factor, the story it seeks to tell is one of an average person plucked from obscurity who manages to find fame through their extraordinary talent and drive. It is a transformative experience, we see our characters overcome various obstacles in their path to glory, many falling at the wayside, until a champion is determined. This story is not specific to X Factor, but to the reality TV competition format as a whole. Shows such as The Great British Bake Off, Love Island and RuPaul's Drag Race, among others, all seek to show someone going on a journey and learning from their experiences along the way before they are unleashed upon the world as something new entirely. But in a show such as X Factor, to celebrity, this transformation is not as readily visible. In our video on Love Island, we talked about how casting teams for reality shows seek to find a diverse range of characters who fulfil particular story roles, which we boiled down to four archetypes. One, that's just like me. Two, that's nothing like me. Three, thank god that's not me. And finally, to perhaps the biggest extent, four, I wish that was me. We go into more detail about what each of these archetypes mean in the relevant video, but for the purposes of this video, I want to focus in particular on the second character archetype, that's nothing like me. A lot of entertainment shows rely on larger than life characters to help boost their appeal. These kind of people have over the top personalities or live extravagant lives which you could only imagine living. But these characters need to be offset by characters whose worlds we can relate to, who give us people to root for because we can see ourselves in them. It's why a sitcom like Arrested Development works so well, because all the craziness is rooted in reality by Michael Bluth, the down to earth de facto leader of the Bluth clan. Michael's presence allows us a point of entry as we encounter the other, ridiculous members of his family, and it's through Michael that we were able to form some form of identification with the show's world. He is our method to the madness. But to extend this metaphor further, 
What would Arrested Development be without Michael Bluth? The answer to this question arrives in the form of X Factor Celebrity. Devoid of any straight, down-to-earth characters that the original series is famous for, X Factor Celebrity is instead populated by people who you know live wildly different lifestyles to you, who don't really have that sort of down-to-earth factor that we look for in a classic X Factor contestant. In fact, the teasers for the show almost seem to take pride in the fact that these people are not down-to-earth. First off, why do you call it a chip butty? I don't think I've ever even heard of a french fry sandwich. But the show also kicks off not with blind auditions, but with a boot camp in which the celebrities are given extensive vocal coaching and performance training is even more telling of the show's commitment to showing us that these people are not like us. But perhaps this isn't the case. Perhaps the idea behind these shows is to see people in a context we have never seen them in before, and thus the experience is transformative through the celebrities learning to master a previously unmastered skill. But X Factor Celebrity, and by extension a large percentage of celebrity talent shows, don't really hold up to this premise. Predominantly because the format beats of the show do not necessarily allow for this type of transformation to take place. In a show such as Celebrity Masterchef, there is a clear trajectory in place. The amateur celebrities showcase their initial skills to the judges. Those who show promise have their techniques and nerves tested until one of them comes out on top with a newfound ability to cook to a restaurant standard. In contrast, the format beats of The X Factor are not as much of a test of increasing skills as much of a war of attrition. There is no increased difficulty to the challenges, you simply keep singing and whoever the public likes the most ends up winning the show. In the regular show, the transformation that takes place is one of confidence of seeing an ordinary member of the public, often dressed in normal clothes with an unfashionable haircut, reach the final with a newfound confidence to have gone from nothing to something over the course of the show's run. But in its celebrity variant, X Factor is dealing with people who already are something, and so what exactly is the purpose of the journey? Just as we do not buy that the viewers of, say, the Celebrity Pact 2005 version of Love Island will go on to form lifelong relationships, it is difficult to buy that the celebrities that are involved in the X Factor will go on to achieve successful, lasting careers in the music industry. And this is because when celebrities are involved in the show, it breaks down the X Factor's structural confines and makes the show inherently metatextual. Let me explain. As I have previously stated, reality TV shows are obviously carefully constructed. Whilst they purport to depict life as it is, they are subject to the same format beats as scripted television shows, predominantly because they are a form of entertainment. However, a well-crafted and constructed reality TV show is great at hiding this fact. But simply, if a show ensures that it's entertaining enough and doesn't stray into a too obvious and predictable formula, it is easy for audiences to suspend their disbelief and immerse themselves in the world of the characters. But when dealing with celebrities, reality TV shows struggle to conceal their format points as easily due to the fact that outside and widespread knowledge of the celebrities in question often influences the reception of a given episode of the show. Just as a particular actor's previous performances can influence their expectations and reception of their subsequent work, so too can knowledge of a celebrity outside of the context of a work in question influence how it is received. An obvious example of this is the recent series of Celebs Go Dating, in which it was publicly known that Megan Barton Hansen and Demi Sims were dating before the show launched. So the show decided to use the series to show their love story, only for them to break up before the show ended, making the whole thing kind of Pointless, really. Yeah. This kind of surface level metatextuality impacts upon our reception of certain elements of the show and the standards by which we hold certain contestants. For example, we might look at someone like Vinnie Jones and give them a free pass because, you know, he's Vinnie Jones, the guy from Snatch. He's trying his best, right? I've had the time of my life. But this kind of awareness doesn't just mean that our biases towards certain celebrities sometimes override our ears, but also impacts upon the kind of hyperbole that is used on and off the show to represent its contestants as credible and talented entertainers. Take for example the group No Love Lost, comprised of ex-Love Island 2018 contestants. There is a clear deficit of talent within this group, no offence, with Samira Mighty's vocals overpowering everyone else's across all of their performances. When the group was eliminated, Simon Cowell was interviewed by the Metro and asked whether he thought Samira had what it took to go solo, to which he replied... That's a very, very good idea. Yeah. 
Do you well, want to tell the other three that? <laughs> so far, so X Factor hyperbole. In a normal series of the show, we'd see Cal snap someone like Samira up after the finale and attempt to catapult their career into the stratosphere. But there is one crucial difference here. Samira Mighty is already a professional singer. Yes, she's known predominantly for being a contestant on Love Island, but her background is as a West End performer who has starred in shows such as Dreamgirls and Mamma Mia. There's no question that she could easily go solo because... She already went solo years ago? The same argument can be made for Kevin McHale, who is literally famous because of his work in Glee, a show where the actors have to... Sing. This level of metatextual awareness makes the whole thing feel staged because, well, it is. When the judges are giving their comments to contestants like Samira and Kevin, it all feels a bit hollow because, well, we've already been there and done that. It simply doesn't work. The recognisability of so many of these faces as staples of other reality TV shows also adds to the feeling that the show is an exercise in self-promotion. Wes Nelson has previously made an appearance on Dancing on Ice, Victoria Ekonoi has been featured on The Chase, and Jenny Ryan was only recently a semi-finalist on MasterChef. Featuring celebrities who have been on other reality TV shows before obviously doesn't invalidate their talent at all. Some of these celebrities have proven over the course of the series that they are talented vocalists, but their appearances on multiple reality TV shows does make it feel like they're only here as a means to garner some easy publicity. The people who compete on X Factor make it clear that this is their dream. They have the opportunity to seize that dream and try desperately not to let that moment go to waste. That's a good story, no matter how you cut it. But let me ask you this. Is it really Wes Nelson's dream to become a famous musician? Every time that I step inside, I don't want a quick thing. Yeah, I'm looking for vibes. Yeah, a hella sweet one that I know I can trust. Probably not. This is simply another way to make some extra cash and retain cultural relevance in a similar manner to the fame-hungry David Brent we see in the Office Christmas special. What are you up to at the moment, David? Just doing this at the moment. <laughs> No, not just now. No. Generally, you've got loads going on, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing more of these. <laughs> Ultimately, The X Factor is a show which prides itself on unrecognised talent, the discovery of a superstar needle within a vast haystack. But The X Factor celebrity goes against this entirely by not only robbing us of this discovery, but also the post-show excitement of a potential new pop star. Whilst the efforts of these celebrities has been noble, and there is no doubt that some unique talent has been unearthed, it stands to reason that we are unlikely to see any of these celebrities abandon their current occupation patients in favour of becoming musicians full time. I have no doubts that Meghan McKenna is a worthy winner, but I also get the feeling that their biggest take home from winning the show will be becoming the answer to a pub quiz question for a few months. And there is nothing particularly X Factor about that. Thank you for watching another Full Fat video. If you'd like to see more from Full Fat videos, why not follow us on Instagram and Twitter? Please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. We've got some cool exclusive content on there. Thank you to our $100 patrons, Dr. Chike and Jax Merrick. Chris and I really, really appreciate it. Until next time, stay milky.